Welcome to your the e-wallet setup. This is going to be a brief walkthrough of your e-wallet. Once you register as a promoter, you'll be taken to your back office and this will be the first screen that you'll see. You need to click on e-wallet to create your account. And then you'll be then you need to go to your email, your inbox, and you will see an email from e-wallet support which is titled e-wallet registration. From there you'll see your name, username, Congratulations, you need to click this link to activate it. Copy and paste your password where it's needed and your username. Once it's activated, once you've successfully done that, it says congratulations, your account has been successfully activated. You're now able to log in and start using. Click on the continue button to go to the next page. It will take you to, it will log you out and then you need to log in using your username and the password that you copied from your email. If you forgot it, just click here or go back to your email. Now these are the, the important steps that you need to fill out are the ones that are in red asterisk. You need to put your username, your name, last name, address, city, state, the zip code, and your email address, the date of birth. Now this, you must be at least 18 years old. Now this is a little different because usually in the states we go month, day, and year. This is the European way, so it's day, month, year. Again, it would be the day, the month, and the year. If you look at it, you'll understand because this is a drop down from 1 to 31. And this lists the month. So it's day, month, and then the year. If you use a company name, you type your company name in here, read this, and then you have to click on the check the inbox, this little box here, to agree to the above note. Check mark each one of these three boxes here that you agree. And if you want to read the fee schedule, click there. Terms and condition and privacy policy. And then your PIN. Your PIN is a five digit number. Anywhere from, I'm sorry, not a five digit, but anywhere from four to ten digit. And it has to be a number. It cannot be anything but a number. Write it down somewhere so you do not lose it. Once you've set up your e wallet, It'll take you to another page that congratulations, you have successfully set up your e-wallet. Next thing you need to do is to validate your e-wallet, so you need to submit your passport or a driver's license or another government picture ID. Not and, it doesn't, you don't need multiples, you just need one. I, use, I submit my driver's license. The easiest way to do it is to upload it from the e-wallet menu, click on my account, upload document, then it will take you to a page and you select what you're uploading it for. For documentation, whether you're uploading your driver's license or anything like that. Once you've done that, you need to val it says you're going to get an email in conjunction with that saying that you need to verify your identity. You need to ver validate it. So you can send your government issued ID. You can email it or use the link that we provided in the previous link here in the previous window. Once that is set up, you'll see the e-wallet icon pop into your back office where before you had didn't have one. So now you click on the e my e-wallet and once that's all set up, you'll notice you can pay your invoices now. So go up here to select invoice and you'll click on PayGar. This isn't say for an ad center that's pending. So I click on PayGar and it takes me to a page that says, here's my invoice number, the date I posted it, the amount. I can cancel it if I want to. And now I won't be able to pay it with this because right now it says identity verification still required. But I'll take you to an account that does have everything set up so we can see how that goes. So this is your pending invoice that you'll receive in an email. E-Wallet's very good about sending you email emails in order to verify your what's happening so you have a record of it. Keep them, I would make a folder instead of just keeping them in your inbox, I would create a folder for e-wallet and put all of your important e-wallet emails in there. This is where I cancel that invoice. And so now up at the top you'll see we now have deposit funds, transfer funds, request card, and my account. You'll also see you'll have your e-wallet ID over here, your name, and then some of the recent transactions. 
Now you'll notice that this one's still pending. I uploaded $10 to my e-wallet account from my bank the other day. This is the one we're going to concentrate on now, the invoice payment options. How do I pay my invoice? You can pay it through an e-wallet. You can pay it, have somebody pay it forward and have a friend pay it. If you know their email or their e-wallet name, you can do it through a bank account. You can do it through a credit card or you can do it through a bank wire. We're going to concentrate on the bank account and the credit card. So the first thing you do is I set up my bank accounts. So I click on the link that says add a new bank account. And then it's going to take me to this page. Now I've divided this page in two sections. First one is step one. You put your account nickname. Uh, you could say Fred's Bank or Fred's uh, Credit Union or whatever you want to nickname it. The bank country, the bank routing number. Now the routing number is the first nine digits usually on your check. If you're not sure what your routing number is, call your bank and they'll tell you. They'll be glad to help you out. Then your checking account or savings account number. Again, if you look at your checks, it's going to be the second set of numbers. And then you need to repeat that. And then you need to click whether it's a checking or a savings account. Those have to be filled out. Then you put in step two is your name and your address. Here's the bank name, the branch address, first name, last name, address, city, the state you live in, and the zip, and the country, of course. And then if you want to set this as a secondary account or a primary account, if it's secondary, you click the little X, little checkbox here. Click continue when you're done. Once you've set up your accounts, you'll see you get the green and you validated everything and you've set up everything to work. You'll see your account names here. And whether if you get a green check mark, a green check box, that means you can use it to make a transfer. I can transfer to eWallet and I can transfer from eWallet. If it's the red X, you cannot use it to make a transfer. Now we do the same thing with the credit card. Put your expiration date, first name, last name, and your card number. Right now they use Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express. The credit card billing address, the city, the state, the zip, and the phone number. Click here if you wanted to make it as a secondary. Now this is information is where your credit card number comes in. The first name and the last name on the credit card, the expiration date, address again, city, state, and zip, and your phone number. And I do not have that set as a secondary payment. This basically is a confirmation of the previous page, so you're making sure you're verifying that everything is correct. I click confirm. And so now that credit card has been added to the profile. However, I cannot do anything with it because I need to verify it. So once what I do here is I click here to verify. And when I do that, what's going to happen is it's going to take a small charge on the credit card. You don't put in anything yet until they withdraw the money from your credit card account. And it, once you click verify amount, it'll take you to, there'll be a temporary authorization transaction on your account for verification purposes. It's going to be automatically removed from your credit card. It can take as much as two to five days, or it could take as little as 15 to 20 seconds. Mine happened to be instant. Um, I, what I did is I clicked the verify. I went over to my Wells Fargo account, and it was there in the back office. Now, another thing you may need to be aware of, though, is your bank may not approve it. It may say declined because this Allied wallet is from Eng is from Great Britain. So when I tried to add my other credit card, it said declined. I called my bank this morning. I asked them why was it declined, and they thought it was fraud because it was coming from Great Britain, and it was a small amount. So the amount that you have will be anywhere from ten cents to two dollars. Mine happened to be twenty-one cents. So I put my CVC code in here. I clicked on the continue and then the next page it took me to was I have to enter that amount that was on the transaction. So I entered 21 cents and it said congratulations you are verified. 
if it's declined you may want to check your bank to have them open it up before you if you have any concerns at all call your bank tell them they're going to be making a, a small withdrawal from your credit card and it's going to be from Great Britain and then tell them that it's okay for them to do then they'll open up the card for that transaction it's going to say your, your credit card is successful what I did is I deleted a card also you can delete one here so here's the transactions that I can now use with my credit card. You'll notice that my status is advanced. I can use $10,000 per transaction and my monthly uh, maximum monthly transfer is $10,000. Lifetime there it's not available I guess it's. So one of the most important things though is and let me go back is that you can when you put in your credit card each credit card can only be linked to one e-wallet account. So if you have multiple accounts, you can only use your credit card for one account, not multiple. Now you'll notice then that the credit, my bank accounts are now verified and so are my credit cards. So now what I do is I can go back to this invoice that I had and now I can select how I want to pay it. So say I want to pay it with one of my credit cards. So I just click on credit card and this page comes up it says review your order it was forty nine ninety it was for the one it's for the phone service there's a processing fee of twenty five cents so my total amount will be fifty dollars and fifteen cents I use the existing credit card that I have in there I enter the CVC code I authorize eWallet to Allied Wallet to initiate a credit card debit for that specified invoice then I put in my transaction pin continue and then what you're going to see the invoice once you do that the invoice is going to be processing until it is paid so and that's basically the setup on how you do an e-wallet and how you put your bank accounts and how you pay for everything if you have any questions um, email us at info at teen or give us you know or call, um, ask your questions on the Monday night trainings or on the um, Monday morning conference calls, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday calls, if you want. We usually get there a little bit ahead of time, so if you have some questions. But the best way is to email us, info at teamnorthside.com.